streaming for you. Hi there, I'm Jason Brenizer. This is the Phenomenal Future Project. I am live streaming right now, day 26 out of 365 days in a row that I'm going to be live streaming and sharing all kinds of information that I am gathering, uh, telling you all kinds of stories about what's going on in the world of blockchain, NFTs, smart contracts, anything Web3 that has to do with you as an artist taking charge of your own damn career and not having to rely on other people to get information out about what it is that you're creating. Put that power back in your hands and have that beautiful interaction with uh, a growing fan base. That's the whole idea here. Today I want to I want to cover a, a topic that is uh, really interesting. You know, so many people talk about the NFTs, uh, kind of like the song War. What is it good for? NFTs. Why would anybody um, pay so much money for an overpriced JPEG? Um, well, there are all kinds of other real-world uh, possibilities besides just having a little uh, JPEG that is the NFT. No, it's all of the stuff that comes along with that as described in the contract that is written in code and uh, is immutable. You'll hear this term thrown around a lot. Immutability just means once it's written and actually put on the chain, no one can go back and change that again. Certainly not the creator, nor anybody else that happens to be reading the information off the blockchain. That is the beauty of what a blockchain has to offer. Uh, it just means we have to program some of that stuff, you know, very smart from from the beginning. Because, you know, we're used to we're used to uh, apps on our phones, and we're used to web apps, of course, on our computers. And you know what it's like. They're always putting out new updates, and a lot of that has to do with bug fixes, right? So with a smart contract, you can't go back and fix bugs. That's just how it works. So you better be pretty damn smart about uh, how you're testing that stuff before you put it out. That is one of the things that, that is different in how the blockchain works and how smart contracts work compared to normal applications. But in a way, that's what a smart contract is. It's this piece of code that is going to be running and based on inputs that come into it from the real world, um, whether that means someone traded the NFT from, you know, uh, wallet one to wallet two kind of thing. That's information that also gets written on the chain. So there's this long history about what's been going on with the uh, NFT. And then of course, uh, like I said, real world outputs, you know, if something happens in the real world, it can key off another piece of the code that never ran before, for instance. It's pretty cool. Uh, but uh, people need to test this stuff out. So that's just one, one little aspect of, of NFTs and why maybe they're a little bit slower to see a lot of the functionality that people have been talking about um, in the news. You know, there, there are a lot of great possibilities of what can happen with NFTs and yet we haven't seen a lot of that implementation happen. And that's, that's a reason why. Um, there are also a lot of other entrenched systems and a lot of those players have uh, incentives to keep, keep the control that they currently have. So uh, <laughs> that sounds like I might get into conspiracy theories here, but no, that's not what we're going to cover today. I, I really wanted to talk about an application that is happening right now. It's still not that, not that prevalent, but it is happening. And it is what people are starting to throwing around a new term. Everyone likes their acronyms, right? So this is an AXU. And uh, AXU, you know, I'm actually going to just flip over here and write that out for you here if I can. Bam, bam, A, X, oh, U. You can tell I'm doing this on my little keypad on my computer without a little pen. Um, AXU, it stands for Asset Backed Exchangeable Unit. So Asset Backed Exchangeable Unit. And that is basically tying an NFT, okay, oh, <laughs> can, I, can I do this for you? Am I really messy? Okay, that can tie these two together. And what this is is a real world product. 
So this is um, real. And this is virtual. And like you really need to see this written out like this. Virtual. <laughs> Vert. <laughs> Sounds good. So what's an example of a real world product right now that that is uh, that is out there that is is being used as a asset backed exchangeable unit? Well, um, believe it or not, well, mm -hmm. what the heck is this that he's drawing? It is definitely not a penis. Uh, this is a bottle of spirits. Okay, so there are a, a number of high-end spirits companies that are um, basically wanting to track ownership of their bottles. And oh, <laughs> you, you can't actually see what's going on. That's hilarious. Um, on the bottom, just bear with. Yeah, this this is this is. Uh, <laughs> it looks like somebody's finger, <laughs> and maybe they're flipping you off. Uh, yeah, that's. I don't know what, what, what that is, but uh, anyway, let's flip back over. That's kind of funny. So there are a number of high-end spirits companies out there that um, you know, sell bottles for an outrageous amount of money, and people collect these, and sometimes they don't even drink them. Why? Because a lot of them, like, like a good whiskey, uh, might get better as it's aged, okay? Um, it, certainly if it's been aged in a, in a, a cask. And so... What we're, what we're finding is that people are buying and selling these things and not actually taking a physical ownership of them. And so they may be stored somewhere in a vault and all that kind of information um, you know, is, is tied to who owns them. But uh, right now, NFTs are being used just a little bit uh, in this market to start really keeping track of who owns what and what the history has been and having that be fully uh, transparent and viewable through a blockchain. So I just wanted to show you the first company out there that is doing a really good job of this is called Blockbar. And I'm gonna do just a little bit of a refresh here because this is what it's like when you first come to their site. Now they're a company out of Singapore and uh, you know in Asia there's quite a market for um, for uh, collecting spirits. And so it's a good, good location for it to be. It's pretty um, central for um, people who are flying all over the world and a very tech-based company, uh, country, so it, it makes sense. Now you can see right when I load it up, I can, I can connect with my Coinbase wallet, my MetaMask wallet, or a few other wallets here as well. And so I, if I did that, clicked on MetaMask, I could sign in with my Ethereum wallet, bam, click on my MetaMask, and hopefully I'm not giving away too much information here. No, you can see it's going to ask me to log in with credentials for a MetaMask wallet. And it is taking quite some time, which is a real surprise here. Um, there we go. So I would, it already recognizes my MetaMask wallet because I, I have that hooked up. And uh, all it's asking for is my password. I would click here and unlock. And then at that point, I would be a user in their system. They'd create, ha, yeah, I'm gonna close that down. Okay, it's caught in an infinite loop. So we're gonna reload this here doesn't give you all that much confidence, <laughs> especially with the amount that you're going to see that people are paying for this stuff. But, uh, uh, you know, they have a very clean website. Uh, it, may, it may have some issues connecting wallets, but honestly, this is 2022 is still like, you know, uh, you know, the internet in, in uh, well, didn't even exist in 19, you know, 87 or whatever, when it was just a few universities and, and a few government agencies. We're kind of there. Um, but they have a really beautiful site, you know, a Web2 site. But let's just go ahead and take a look and see what they've got. Obviously, they have a lot of companies that are trying to test this out and see how viable it is. 
um, Remy Martin. We've got Patron, which is a, a tequila. We've got a Japanese whiskey. Now, of course, I don't know what their price is because it says not listed. Johnny Walker. This is an interesting one. Uh, from 58 ETH. Well, as we record this, um, ETH is at about 1600 times 58. So that's a $92,000 and change um, bottle. And uh, I could buy now. I don't have my wallet, of course, <laughs> hooked up to that. But uh, let's go ahead and see if we can get some data here. So I guess now additions might mean bottles that have been released. And this one here is available for 58 ETH. The rest of them are not listed. These are the owners. They're, they obviously have used handles. Oh, Ritson Pinheiro might be his real name. That's pretty cool. Lots of these people, Crummy Seahorse 4, are not really wanting their identities known because maybe they don't want to know that they could afford a $92,000 US dollar bottle of um, Johnny Walker Masters of Flavor special select edition but uh let's see if if i try to make an offer here what happens probably nothing because i don't have my wallet linked so it's surprising me that it even allows me to do that but it would be really interesting if they gave a little more data um on what the heck this bottle is how it was made, um, how many can be made in the future, you know, a history, a story that comes with this. You would think that for $92,000 <laughs> that uh, you're buying a story as much as you are buying the actual liquid in that bottle and the, uh, and the fancy emerald-like glass that is filling it up. It's, uh, it's a little, little troublesome here that they don't really give you that information. I'm going to go back to their main page. And um, I guess that's the marketplace, but maybe they have some stuff under brand. So that was Johnny Walker. Let's, uh, let's click on Johnny Walker, the brand, and see what they have to say. Yeah, they have the Johnny Walker address that will actually get paid. And there we go. This guy is a special liquid based on 200 years of Scotch knowledge and craftsmanship in the fields of malting, blah, 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 blah. Um, learn more. There we go. So, okay, so it takes a little while to get what you want the information. They made a little video here as well. They're showing this special container that it comes in. Different views of the bottle. Here we go. Got some story about Johnny Walker in general. Tasting notes. Okay, so it's nice to see that they actually have a little bit of detail here. And I think this is the artwork. Yeah, artwork NFTs will be allocated to buyers at random. And there were seven bottles only that they were selling in this particular series. And so each bottle will have its own piece of digital artwork associated with it. So for instance, a person may buy this and one of the ways that they might want to flex in the world would be say they're on Twitter and they've linked, they have Twitter blue. It's a special account that people pay for. And there is a special uh, shape that actually shows up on their user uh, profile picture. And you can link those to NFTs that you own. So someone may want this to show up as their profile pic um, on Twitter or on some other account to show that they are lovers of Johnny Walker and um, can afford <laughs> to pay for a bottle of liquid, what some people can't afford to pay for a house. So um, I can't, 
Honestly, I wish I could afford that. <laughs> I guess we all wish we, we could afford things that are not necessary, but um, you know, there are plenty of connoisseurs out there. So if someone can afford to buy a $92,000 bottle here of this liquid gold, <laughs> uh, I wanna tell you as an artist that there are plenty of people out there. If this is art in a bottle and it's a physical product and there are NFTs associated with it and it makes it much easier for someone to prove ownership. And then also if the value of this bottle goes up, this person could potentially sell it 10 years from now for $350,000. That is possible because that's what happens in the world of high-end collectibles. That if that's possible, I want you to know that you selling uh, your artwork, whether it's physical or whether it's digital, more like a special edition of a, uh, you know, an album you're dropping, only seven of them, well, you might be able to sell those for $2,000, okay, and still make a pretty penny and um, help pay for your mortgage, right? I mean, I just, I, I want you to really see what's possible out there. This, this is not, you know, most of us don't see this world because, well, it's it's very select group and, and usually when you get into this kind of collector con connoisseurship, it's, um, uh, these people are isolated in their own little groups. And um, yeah, so just, want to tell you there are people that are willing to pay for your special awesomeness now yes johnny walker very high end well not all of it but they obviously can uh, they have a name right there's a brand so this is the other aspect of this it's the other aspect of this for for artists that i really want you to think of it's not necessarily only the product that you've created whether your painting is beautiful or ugly in a beautiful way, or it says something about the world that strikes people emotionally, that's all good and all necessary. But there's also this idea of the brand that you need to cultivate around what it is that you're doing, because that's how people really remember um, what you're up to, okay? So think of your favorite, your favorite music artists, um, or your favorite, um, movie star, okay? Movie star is a good example where, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a brand. Did, did you ever see Cary Grant with, with long hair and a giant beard, okay? Um, I don't think so. But part of his brand was very clean, very well, you know, well kept, wore nice suits, all that kind of stuff. Spoke well, okay? That was Cary Grant's brand. When you think about, um, you know, when you think about the Rolling Stones, especially maybe Keith Richards, right? He's really known for his hard partying and not giving a, a flying F about it. Did I just say a flying F because I don't want to curse on the platforms over here? Probably that's what I did, yeah. <laughs> what's, what's my brand? Do I really care if people think that I'm gonna say fuck or not? I suppose maybe I do, but uh, that's another aspect of this. You can't make everybody happy, so. Um, uh, branding, very important to think about. It's not just some stupid word that, that uh, guys on Madison Avenue use or giant corporations are talking about, okay? Um, consistency of brand and also building a reputation for uh, potentially quality or a reputation for um, saying exactly what you, what you think and not caring about you know, how that can offend anybody. That's a brand, okay? Um, if you do it out of character, it's not necessarily part of your brand, it's out of character and people could be appalled. But you know, if, if that's, you know, uh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I, I got, kind of got a little bit off, off the rails here, but uh, let's get back to um, looking a little bit more at Block Bar here. We'll go back to the top and uh, let's see, we were just clicking on different brands and maybe you're, uh, maybe you really love Dictador rum. And so look at this crazy bottle that they, they went ahead and, and designed here for their, for their rum. And this is their 3D NFT 
uh, image. Look at that. It's got some colors on it and stuff too. So, you know, they're, they're, they're creating uh, an, an NFT image that's basically saying this is the representative of, of the thing that we've created. And look, their brand is totally different with this, you know, wondrously colored, uh, angled, ferocious ape. Okay, totally different than what we were looking at at the, the emerald of the Johnny Walker, you know, select edition. So uh, let's go ahead and view the release here. Status, this is live. You can buy it for 26 ETH. That's about 45,000 US dollars right now. Um, click on our NFT de details. It's, um, there are only five of them, number 34 through 39 in this lot. You can view the imagery and stuff on the inter interplanetary, uh, oops, what did I do? Clicked on something that, that just gave me a little bit of code. The uh, IPFS, where is it? Right here. View on the interplanetary file system. You can look at the metadata. That's probably what I just clicked on actually. This is telling you what blockchain it's on. Um, drops are dates, essentially. And I'm gonna move that a little bit here. Our, uh, let's see, they dropped it right around Christmas time, 2021. The yeah, ambitions one through six. And uh, here you go. They've got more images based on the individual NFTs. Richard Orlinski might be the CEO of uh, Dictador. Let's look at some of these images. So yeah, I think each bottle is its own unique thing. And like I said, what's happening in the world of spirits is that um, collectors are, are buying they're buying the physical product, but they're not necessarily taking, taking physical um, ownership of it in the sense that, you know, there's a guarantee if it stays at Dictador or at Block Bar or wherever the case may be um, in how this is set up, that, that the, the vault is going to say, oh, no one actually opened the bottle up and no one poured any of that out and drank it, and nobody replaced it with some um, inferior spirit, right? That's something that happens in the world of um, uh, collectibles, collectibles, especially when we're talking about spirits, is that people will be very clever in creating fakes. So the bottles themselves may be fakes and not real. The, the liquid that they put in it might, it might, might have been the real original bottle, but they cleverly figured out a way to open it up pour out all the good stuff, drink it, and then fill it back up with junk and close it back up and sell that as if it were the real deal. Like, oh my God, I got this $30,000 bottle of Ardbeg for you know $22,000. I totally stole it off the guy. Well, you might not be getting what you, you know, in the normal world, you might not be getting what you thought. But in this case, they can guarantee you know, what it is that uh, you would be getting if it never left the vault. Okay, they can have a history of the NFT activity, you know, the who, who bought it from who. So when it first got minted, Dictador sold this, this bottle to Swagman. Okay, <laughs> you can kind of get a, a clear idea of what these people uh, are interested in. Uh, Amused Dotore 14, <laughs> Degen Princess. So this was a transfer. So somebody knew somebody. This was not an actual sale. Dictador transferred the ownership of this to Amused uh, Dotere or Dotaire 14. Um, but here was an actual sale for 12.74 ETH, 10 ETH. So you can, uh, you can see here that a few haven't even been minted yet, or they were minted, but, but uh, just to Dictador. So they hold ownership and can potentially sell it or give them away. 
So interesting. Yeah. And over here, over on the left, you can see, I know this is hard to see, but this is that super colored, multicolored kind of graffiti gorilla. So it's interesting to note, yeah, looking at, at kind of the, the history of these, um, you know, have, if we clicked on, let's go back to that one, sorry. If we go down to the history here, the last sale price was 10 ETH. It's gone down 24%, which is not a surprise since ETH, Ethereum or Ether is down a lot as well. The original primary market price um, and so you can kind of get a history of how this changes over time. Let's look at monthly, yearly. We don't, we don't have that data, do we? January. 10 ETH. So that's it. It's, 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 it got minted. It got sold for 12.7 ETH and then 25. And there you go. Um, interestingly enough, Swagman transferred it to Swagman. So this is an interesting example of where it was probably originally purchased in one wallet and then it got transferred into a secondary wallet owned by the same individual. So just because a wallet exists, it's not an actual person's ID. Any person can have multiple wallets. Hopefully this is somewhat interesting. You know, anytime we go through these, you know, NFT marketplaces, um, you know, we want to we want to see, you know, how how um, advanced are the marketplaces? How many people are actually on here doing trading? Um, what do they have to offer that's different than any other marketplace? Certainly, like I said, this is the only. Um, wine and high spirit marketplace that I'm even aware of that's remotely operational. So these guys got in early and they've been doing a good job. Now I, I looked at this several months ago and they have a lot more brands now and they have a lot more functionality on, on um, their site as far as analysis and looking at lists and things like that. So to me that means these people are in it for the long haul. They've actually made some quick advancement even in a, a market where there's a master massive downturn. Um, I'm wondering what activity, okay, so they have a long activities list. If we look at the most recent, it can, you can basically see all of the things that have, so there's a transfer, a transfer, a sale. This is a Penfolds McGill. It's a, it's a wine here for 0.3 ETH. So, uh, $500 something like that still quite a expensive bottle of wine uh, now this is interesting so monkey shoulder I honestly don't know what alcohol is in here but if you've done any looking into NFTs you will recognize that this is a board ape branded onto this alcohol so I believe, uh, yeah, blended malt, scotch whiskey. We don't know where, we, we don't know if it's like nine different distilleries that they blended this stuff together or what. Uh, but you can see, look at all this trading that's happened. So what's happened with um, the uh, monkey shoulder alcohol here on Block Bar is they've, they've paired it with an actual ape, bored ape, uh, yacht Club number 5400. So that's where that image comes from. And uh, there is an alcohol associated with it. So what, what they're doing is they're making a single bottle, I believe, available to a single NFT out there that already exists. So there's a, an NFT plus the bottle tied together, right? That, that asset-backed exchangeable unit, or the AXU that we talked about at the beginning, that, um, and, and the Bored Ape owner actually can claim this for free. 
this is a way basically that the company, Block Bar, I believe, is, is, has partnered with some alcohol companies to say, hey, let's, let's introduce what we have on offer, collecting uh, fine wines and spirits to a, a group of people that they already know is playing in the NFT space and has a lot of cash to burn, okay? Because these board apes are not cheap. So now that's brilliant marketing, right? It's, it's a perfect, it's a perfect kind of um, what we call working with affiliates. It's like it probably contacted the Yuga Labs, that's the creators of Board Ape Yacht Club, and said, hey, this is something that we would like to do. Um, and I, I think they needed to get permission. But uh, that's, that is a brilliant way to tie yourself to a group of people that are already very close to the audience that you want to serve. It's pulling in new people too, which is great. Because like I said, the, the high-end spirits um, marketplace is a very um, insular group. And growing an audience is, you know, it's like going back to the same people again and again and again is where they typically are going to make the biggest bang for the buck. But in this case, they saw an opportunity to grow completely new group of potential clients and customers um, from, a, from a tangential kind of uh, marketplace, but they have a lot of characteristics that, that match their, their ideal client. So I think they've done a masterful job here of thinking about how to quickly, um, quickly grow um, the total size of the marketplace. By, by, port, by partnering with the Board Ape Yacht Club and Yuga Labs. And what's interesting to see, right, that bottle I showed you earlier where the graph had like three dots. This shows the original person getting it in May. And then since May, there's been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen times this thing has been traded. So if we look at the... NF NFT activity, um, edition history, release history. Yeah, number 5,400. So you can see a number of people. Sale, transfer sale, claim, transfer claim, gift. Interesting. 1219, 1095. Okay, so there are multiple bottles number 173 number 172 1058 I'm not exactly sure how this all works but we're showing us multiple bottles in here rather than just one bottle so maybe the trading isn't as much as i i thought but i think what we're seeing is the entire series and what's happened so there have been 133 total secondary sales since since the drop in may and 326 total primary sales. So um, I still say in a down market with a brand new group of people who, who never, probably were never collecting high-end alcohol, um, that's pretty good activity. So lots of things you can learn about here. It, it, you know, I obviously am showing you kind of my process about how I go through and, and kind of analyze what all these people are up to. Now, I am taking, um, I'm taking all of this information that I'm learning and I'm sharing with you here as kind of giving you my thought process. I want you to recognize that I am, I am taking all this information in, uh, tabulating it, doing a lot of cross comparisons and all of that, seeing what the best practices are, seeing what the new hot way of, of kind of really getting the word out and really um, having a huge impact. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to boil all that down. Like I put it in, if you took chemistry, uh, there's, a, there's a crucible and you put the Bunsen burner under the crucible, right? And you put your chemicals and all your stuff in here and then you heat that thing up. And the crucible is, it mixes all the stuff together and with the heat and everything, you can, you can activate, you can do chemical reactions and change, change the state, make a transformation. So the idea here is that I am doing this a lot. I'm showing you just kind of the, the surface of the iceberg about all of the deep work that I'm doing. 
and over time I will be collecting all of this information, boiling it down, transforming it into something that's going to be actionable for all of you artists out there um, with some programs and courses and masterminds and things like that that we're putting together so that you don't have to do all of what I'm doing. Like I said, this is just these videos that I show you are the tip of the iceberg. You're seeing a little slice of 35 minutes um, out, of my, out of my very long day because I love what I'm doing that, uh, you know, 12 hours or whatever on a, on a day that I'm working on all this stuff so I can bring it to you in a distilled format, uh, kind of like these high-end spirits um, where it's going to be a bottle of gold that I'm going to be able to share with you and help you do what these companies um, have been doing at the forefront of utilizing NFTs and Web3 technology and really building their audience of, of raving fans. You can't deny that the, that, that the people who, who purchased their, the Bored Apes, you know, these overpriced <laughs> JPEGs, <laughs> uh, they love that, the branding behind it. They love the story behind it. They love the fact that they're part of that tribe. Okay, those are the people that we're gonna we're gonna help you get and really take your career to the next level. We're gonna help you find who your ideal fans are and how to attract them. That's a big part of what we're up to. And then of course there's a lot of a lot of technical stuff that that'll come with that. But um, we want to give you the foundations first, and then and then we can figure out you know what kind of social media platform is better than another. Um, you know, learning kind of the techniques about how to interact with your fans can work across almost all social media. Um, it just depends on where your individual people that are going to love what you're up to are hanging out. And that's, we'll figure that out too. So that is it for today. We've been going pretty long, um, 37 minutes. Thank you for watching this. This is the Phenomenal Future Project. We are committed to making this happen uh, constantly, <laughs> videos, Every day, uh, we are across multiple um, platforms. I don't know where you're seeing us. It might be on YouTube, it might be on Facebook. Uh, there are other places where we're, we're going out there. Minds, M-I-N-D-S, minds.com is a blockchain-based uh, social media platform that is pretty new. We're also on there. We're gonna be putting our podcast up on Substack here pretty soon, but it will be on any um, podcast reader that you have because it's going out RSS. I'm talking a lot of mumbo jumbo here. You don't need to know that. You just need to know what your favorite way to listen to podcasts are. And you can find us under Phenomenal Future Prog uh, Podcast. That's PFP, like we always are. And uh, believe it or not, besides Phenomenal Future Program and Podcast, that also stands for um, Proof for Picture or Profile Picture, which is a big deal in the NFT space. So there you go. That's another reason why we have that name. And uh, branding, that's, <laughs> that's a good example. Uh, I'm Jason Brenizer. I am so thrilled to be on this journey with you, building a phenomenal future for artists out there. I know you can do it. Just keep, keep, keep learning uh, and keep making your art, and we're going to eventually find just a ridiculously large audience for you and have you make a phenomenally lucrative career. And uh, with that, I will say I love you phenoms and I will